Brandon and Najee. There you go. Yep. Brandon, I think, had the hardest audition <laughs> of anyone. Yeah, no kidding. Because I literally almost took off his head. <laughs> not in this scene, not punching him. That fortunately was done by Ruben Langdon, who can punch way better than I can. Oh, leave him alone. Oh. And Najee, too, when he came in red for Sam, that had that. It's all right. They're not the bad guys. Lower the Just this kid that's kind of terrified to live in this world. Yeah. Man, you hit hard. Yeah, well, I was trying to kill you. And these yeah, these two characters are really showing they're kind of a mirror of Joel and Ellie's relationship. You haven't noticed they don't keep kids. And it's it's another warning for Joel, like this whole arc for, for uh, Henry and Sam of what's gonna happen if you stick with this girl. You're gonna go through what these two characters are gonna eventually end up. I do like that Sam is a character that seems genuinely scared because a lot of the other characters can tend to be a little bit more badassy. Right. Mm -hmm. And he's just, he's young and he's scared. And yes. I love that. To me, he also comes across very sullen. Like there, yeah. there's like just a little glimmer of hope and joy, but it's almost like any time there is a moment of that, and then Henry kind of takes that away from him. It, it also gives yeah. Ellie an opportunity to play a mentor of sorts for him. Mm. Yeah. Be safer if we chat there. All right, take us there. Welcome to my office. One thing that I think made Brandon such a great choice for this and the right choice for this is this scene about how much he owned it and the pride that he had in showing off this wonderful camp that they had made for themselves and kind of like trying to impress Joel and Joel just come, you know, very nonplussed about the whole thing. He's like, oh, good for you. Yeah, you've done this. And relax. <laughs> We're safe. Well, the interesting thing, I mean, the way I read it is like Joel is impressed, but he's not, he's trying not to show, show it. He's trying to still test this, this kid. But there's a lot of, he sees himself in Henry. Yeah. Very, very much so. And this is, I remember we going back and forth about this because. Oh yeah, because layout changed. Because initially this was, they were going to go through the camp right. at night. And then we had to change the layout, so we had to go in and re-record these lines. Well, and there's interesting, there's something on the reverse that it doesn't really matter, but yeah. the, when we shot this, the entire time that he was laying out this plan, I was just looking at him. Because I was like, I really care about your plan, kid. I care more about you. It's kind of like poker. You don't play the cards, you play the man. <laughs> Again, one of those fleeting moments where kids can be kids. She doesn't seem bothered by all this. Hmm. A powerful line, and Joel completely just dismisses it. You guys were actually doing that in the background while we were doing this scene. This was so great. It wasn't like shot separately. I know we were just fooling around. <laughs> <laughs> you guys like shut up. <laughs> it just seems like there's a lot of people putting their stock on the fireflies these days. Yeah, maybe there's a reason for that. So you don't know. I love this standoff, even though it's a sit off almost <laughs> between the two of them, where Joel's just pushing him, pushing him for information, just to see where. Where this kid's grounded. Easy. That nod. Yeah, the, the, the threat being so subtle, but it's there. Yeah. And it's the other thing, again, that Brandon did with this that everybody else didn't do. They kind of really got in Joel's face, and he didn't. He didn't posture himself that much. It was just like, this is us. I'll take care of mine, you take care of yours. And also that he doesn't correct him about your daughter. Mm -hmm. Joel doesn't correct him. He's not, you know, she's not my daughter. You your girl, you want to join us. It goes down the night. I guess we best rest up then. And I guess that's, that's the most Joel's gonna give him. Yeah. That's all Henry needs. Joel sleeping again. These were my favorite scenes where I just got to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Fast, okay? And so the, the idea of these two pairs that glue, are coming together. Glue, God, and they were just they so, such great brothers. Brandon and Aji did such a great okay. job together. How many bullets do you have left? I remember it was funny because jumping off of this bridge, there's just a 
a, <laughs> a rope, a, a line of tape, and then you have to like jump off of it. Because we were both funny. stepping over it at first. They're like, <laughs> yeah. no, this is like 50 feet down. I know, oh, I was like, right. oh, so we got to do a whole thing. <laughs> it looks ridiculous what we're doing. It's like, oh, with our arms above our head. <laughs> I know. And this part where you're in the water, we had you on a cart. That's right. And, they and were we like just pushed you across, across. Yeah. <laughs> mocap stage. <laughs> it was actually pretty violent being on that. It was. It was pretty scary. <laughs> This was part of the audition scene that Brandon did that really just kind of helped us realize Henry. we had the right Henry. He's awake. Hey, you. We're Back on. to the salesman. It's like, hey, buddy, everything's okay. <laughs> everything's I know. all right. I, I really like that about his character, that he's kind of a salesman. You know, Sam's the one who spotted you. You guys are taking quite a bit of water. What's wrong? Henry! Get it's back, hey, 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 hey. He's pissed, but he's not going to do anything. You sure about that? Stop! He's confident. He knows he can calm you down, but he needs Sam to stay out of the way. Right, just in case. Yeah. Chance of making it, and you did. But coming back for you meant putting him at risk. Stay back. I think there's already the change there. Joel knows it's true. Yeah. Joel wouldn't have come back for him. I saved you. And even when we were shooting this too, I mean, that's you. You really get into that moment, and every time that I felt that hand on my shoulder, it's. It's almost like that Hulk moment where you realize, oh, I, I felt bad for letting you see that part of me because so far I really haven't, in these moments, let that demon out. Okay. I've done what I've had to do, but this is just cold-blooded murder I'm about to do. The thing with Henry, which Brandon really brought to it, which is making light of everything for bad. Sam. Everything is done for Sam. Right. I think he really is intimidated. He is scared in the situation, but he's making more light of it so yeah, Sam isn't as scared as he is. Because the second that Sam sees that he's scared, you know, Sam will be scared. Silver lining kid. This is the longest okay. short scene in the game. <laughs> <laughs> I had to fit that in there, quit this place from this, since we had it right. in the, the first trailer. <laughs> I can't quit you. <laughs> I remember when we first, the very, very beginning of this, when we like did the first table read through this and everything, and we talked about, I asked if there was going to be a moment of just a, a, a light shining through in, in, in this darkness, and you talked about this scene, and at that point it was just really kind of just real easy brush strokes of, of what it was going to be, and it really came into fruition and became this. this well, all the characters here have their guard down. It's kind yeah. of unique because usually somebody's lying or somebody's hiding something. Right. And here's like, everybody has their guard down. And they're just talking about motorcycles. You two deserve a little privacy. And you were really giving too on this. We spent a lot of time on this and there was this one scene where you just kind of let me ramble about mm -hmm. you know, we, to where we really feel like we're coming midway into a conversation. I don't remember what was said, but it was just this cool moment. You went more into the details of like with Tommy and where you went and the States and yeah. all that stuff. I think that really helped kind of make this, the, the following takes much more natural. Right, without all the rest of that yeah. stuff, the preamble being there. But I love the turn that he gives right here. It's like the kids have gone to bed now and we can, yeah. we can just talk like adults. Worst part about it all. Animation and lighting, right? If you don't capture these looks in the eyes, this scene doesn't work. Right. The thing that I love about this well, is that he's set up a little office for himself, kind of like what Henry did. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's this... I'm being official, trying to be a grown-up. He's still a kid, and we see it in this moment. I really enjoyed working with Brandon and Najee. Just having them on set was so much fun. They're such Najee good especially, dudes. like Najee's we, hilarious. We're doing this crazy scene, and we like cut, and then he's like just starting dancing or, or yeah. singing, the, singing whatever you know YouTube hot song at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> you know, song bombing us all day. They were so much fun. I just adore them too. Everything all right? You, you, you got an opportunity to put so much of you into Ellie. That's just because yeah. I can't write, so I would just listen to Ashley talk, <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's a good line. <laughs> Have a good night. That's giving me way too much credit. How is it that you're never scared? It's like says that I'm not? putting up the defense, making like making joke of it, as, as Ellie does. Yeah. And then seeing when she needs to, because that's the only way she's going to cheer him up, she's going to open up to him. And also she kind of throws out that bone, like, yeah. you know, scorpions are pretty creepy. Yeah. That's not what I want to talk about. Uh, being by myself. 
which again, all this stuff she's saying here plays into what happens later when she finds out Joel's trying to give her up, giving her away to Tommy. Yeah. Those things out there. What if the and it's kind of the same thing we're seeing with Tess, what if they're trapped to where she was, again, you, she knows what's going on, he knows what's going on, but it's looking externally for some kind of either comfort or hope or answer or something. And then they just always come up empty. I guess one thing I'm just thinking about now, which is all the stuff Sam is going through because he's bitten, is probably the stuff Ellie went through when she was first bitten because she thought she was going to turn. And it just happens that she was immune. But So she that's why she kind of... Do you think that's true? All these realizations she's had. I go back and forth. I mean... I'd like to believe it. That's a powerful thing for a, essentially. A, it's kind of sad because that's not what Sam wants to hear. He right. wants yeah. to hear that it's all going to be all right. right. But she doesn't realize that's what. No, he death is death is terrible. It's a horrible, painful process, and you're all alone. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Almost forgot. There. If he doesn't know about it, he can't take it away. All right. This did make me sad because I'll see you tomorrow. You know, he spent that whole night alone. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, yeah. Know, Henry didn't go back in there. I let him sleep in, just like, yeah, let oh, him sleep in. Oh. And that was the last conversation he had. And that always made me so sad after I read that because I was like, oh. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. And what would have happened if Henry had gone in there? I mean, the fact that he, that Henry wasn't there, I mean, plays into, you know, the, the culmination of this scene where he's just racked with guilt. I mean, one thing we're very conscious of when putting the story together is we would have these really kind of dramatic moments that change the characters significantly, and then we would cut to some more time in the future. Yeah. And you'll, so you don't get to see right afterwards what happened to him, and then you get hints of how, they, how this affected the relationship, which is what you get into the, the next gameplay sequence. And this whole thing is, um, it's a huge change in Joel here. Because now he sees, this is what's going to happen to me. The same thing that's happening to Henry right now is what would happen to me if I'm going to keep going and let Ellie get hurt. Yeah. And it's like, he's going to, after this moment, he makes a choice, like, I need to give her to Tommy. Oh, my God. See? Oh, no. I have no idea what that would do to a person to actually see that, to have to do that. You know, I remember talking with Brandon about this when he's saying it's all your fault. He's not talking to Joel, he's talking to himself. Yeah. Okay, okay, easy. Yeah, the thing that's cool with this piece, Gustavo's music, is that you're carrying that weight. You're carrying the weight of that emotion of everything just happened onto the next scene, which even though they might not be thinking about Henry and Sam right this moment, but it's just that feeling is lingering going forward. I own that shirt. I still think we should sell off our mocap suits for charity. Unwashed. Jeffrey Pierce. Who is the lady says? Ashley Scott. Hey. Sorry, Ashley Hart. Please tell me your Oh yes. Ashley Hart. She was married. Oh, we didn't know the place was occupied. We're just trying to make our way through. Through to where? They're all right. But you know these people? I know him. He's my goddamn The chemistry was so good between the two you, of you them. and Jeffrey. It was amazing how well, and I mean, Jeffrey's just a few years older than me, but it was interesting being, playing the older brother to him. And yeah, we felt like brothers immediately. It was crazy. Oh, well, Jeffrey came, I mean, we almost cast Jeffrey yeah. as Joel. Uh, and then once, like, months later, we, we needed to cast Tommy. I was like, oh, well, what's, what's Jeffrey Pierce doing? That's, that's for <laughs> not blowing my head off. Been embarrassing considering you're my brother-in-law and ashley scott she came really close to being cast as tess and yeah. then when we needed maria i was like oh ashley scott. The person Ellie, there was there were uh, no additions for, yeah. for these roles i love this awkward setup of of this is how he meets his sister-in-law and he meets yeah. jeffrey's you know or, or tommy's wife sorry why don't we bring him inside 
and you just get to see here now how Ellie's starting to become more secretive. Well, also it's like the way they're standing and everything. It's like Ellie's kind of alone now. Like now it's like Joel is with Tommy and there's no one familiar with Ellie. It's quite the crew you got here. Yeah, they're good men. This place gives them a second the chance. The theme of redemption. Ah. Uh, Give us all a second chance. So why'd you leave Boston? We went through this so many times. I've been on quite the adventure. And each one of them I thought was great in its own little version. It was just kind of like trying to pick the right one. But this is where you get to see. Well, but Joel's putting up a front here. I mean, he's he's trying to. He's pitching his little he, brother. Yeah. And it's it's so interesting to see them slip how how they're two different men, but they instantly go back into those roles that they were before. And just by the behavior here, you get um, hints of what happened in those twenty years. Right. How dark things went. Like they're they're playing nice. Right. They were happy to see each other, but now it's like it's oh, right right. The you haven't changed. <laughs> And that's, I mean, that's so true to life. Like, especially with brothers, you go back to that. I push these buttons and you do this. This isn't for me, Tommy. This is for your damn cause. My cause is my family. And I loved, I mean, what Jeffrey was doing posture-wise. Jesus, boy. Putting Joel on the offensive. And, and now he's just, like, insulting everybody here and insulting his wife. Tommy, I need this. And again, just Joel just expects... I, I tell my little brother to do something, he needs to do it. Right. But I ain't taking that girl Which is totally that. based on my brother. <laughs> this is how you gonna repay me, huh? Repay you? For all those goddamn years I took care of us. Took care? That's what you call it? I got nothing but nightmares from those years. You survived because of me! It wasn't worth it. And Tommy here, is, I mean, Tommy and Maria show that, that even in this world, this world is horrible, you could find peace in it. Right. You could, you could build a community. You don't have to resort to these things that Joel has. That line was a great thing that, that Jeffrey improv on. Put your hands on me again. It's a good Southern phrase. You okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm fine. Joel! Oh, man. They were coming in from every direction, then Maria was like, we gotta run! That's where you see Tommy... Tommy realizes for the first time that Joel really cares for this girl. This isn't just a job. And that's where he has that change, and he's like, oh, crap. I'm, this is why he's asking me to do this. Absolutely not. You tell him to go find somebody else. And again, it's just such a real moment between a married couple. It's like... What's that all about? Honor and, and you know, <laughs> doing something for selfishness and everything else, that doesn't play in this world anymore. Those are archaic ideals. I don't want you to go out there because you're going to get killed, and we don't owe him anything. Because I'm sure all she knows is the 20-year-old Joel, 20-year-old version of Joel. Right. Why would you risk your life for that guy? You hate him, essentially. One fuck up, and then I turn into one of those widows, okay? And for Ellie, it was it was important to show that she could just read Joel. She has this bullshit detector that, just by the way he's answering her questions, she understands exactly what he asked Tommy to do. Maria. Here we go. Love this moment. Here we go. <laughs> if anything, anything at all happens to him, it's on you. The posture and everything. He knows he's in the wrong. He knows he can't ask Tommy to do this. <laughs> yeah. She's thankful, you know. Yeah, I know. I'll take that girl of yours to the Fireflies. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, he really cares for you. It's best this way. There's so much more behind it, though, than that, than, than just care. It's... It's Tommy showing that he's the bigger man, that he's the better man. He's allowing his brother to be shallow and well, selfish. Well, he's I mean, I, I think he's, he knows what his brother's been through. He knows why he can't go through that again. Which way? Come on. This is probably my favorite scene. What a long day this was. Boys, movies. Deciding which I honestly think this is one of the best scenes that you wrote, Neil. It's bizarre. Get up. Because it says so much about this world and especially Ellie, where she's at and realizing how different 
and how much of a chasm there is between this world and that. I agree. Goddamn stupid. Well, I guess we're both disappointed with each other then. What do you want? I, I, I think I really like about this scene is that they're both kind of, I guess, being selfish in a way. And yet it's be coming from a place because they really care about each other. Like they don't understand that they both have been through horrible things. And they each think what they've been through has been worse. God, I love that she calls him out on that. What are you so afraid of? How many close calls have we had? Well, we seem to be doing all right so far. And now you'll be doing even better with Tommy. Not her, you know. What? And it's like the stakes are high, and it's like, okay, well, then I'm going to drop this bomb. I'm not her. Oof. Mighty thin eyes here. It's like, how many years has it probably been for Joel since he even, like, Don't thought about it, me. mentioned it? You have no idea what loss is. I think Joel's thought of that name every day, but I don't think he's heard it said. That shove that you gave that was nowhere in the script. Fucking except for you. I think that came out of... Frustration, definitely, because when we had come back and we couldn't find it, and I wasn't necessarily frustrated with you. I was frustrated with us and the scene. and I was like, oh, fuck. It's so cold of Joel to do this, and I've had people on the team ask me to remove this part, that he's being too cold, and I'm like, no, it's like, because she's being so vulnerable and he's having these feelings, he's trying to shut it down. That's why he's being so cold. It was so important for me to keep that in there. When he says, you're not my daughter, it's almost an insult. And it's kind of the opposite of what he's feeling. This scene was such a great opportunity to show even just like all these mini arcs with characters. You know, we don't have a lot of time and we're not gonna, we can, we can only tell Joel and Ellie's story we can't go into such detail with Bill and Tommy and Tess and Marlene. But you get this great resolution between these brothers because you get the full arc of it in just a short, short amount of time. It's like the way I approached it is the seed has been planted. Like when she says, I'll just be more scared. That Joel just needs time. And in time, he will change his mind because he doesn't want, he doesn't want any, deep down, he doesn't want anything that will hurt Elliot. So over there, the idea is just this little horse riding montage is he's, that change is brewing. And Gustavo's music doesn't hurt. What's so great about how this plays out is there's really nothing happening but just this passage of time. That used to be a level that you played through. And just during production cuts, we had to, we changed it. So it actually worked out better. It just became this idyllic idea that you never fully reach. You just see it from the outside. Where is this lab of theirs? It's all the way out, University of Eastern Colorado. Pointing out the, you know, this, this moment that there was probably a time when these two used to watch college football together, you mm -hmm. know, and calling out. He's like, go big horns, you know. For our college that we made. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want one of their t-shirts so bad. University East, East Colorado. <laughs> because Colorado is such a big state. I don't want her coming after me. Sorry for stealing your horse. Well, come back to town. Let's discuss it at least. You know me, my mind's all made up. University, Eastern Colorado. How do I find this lab? It's in the science building. Looks like a giant mirror and you can't miss it. And the, the idea of offering Joel a place, a place of refuge, a place of redemption. Well, and originally we had some, you know, I think there was a line that we had, that I threw in there or something. It was like maybe someday or something. It was just too on the nose. And we ended up saying, we don't need that. Yeah. This needs to be a... The look is enough. Well, and the offer to me is enough. Mm -hmm. About to hear Steve Bloom. Lovely Steve. <laughs> Silk throated Steve Bloom. <laughs> They're looking for the fireflies. They've all left. Yeah, no shit. I'm dead. Or I will be soon. Got me 
What a macabre scene, though. I love that Ellie's just kind of thumbing through things. She's pretty frustrated with not having found the fireflies, not knowing where to go. Man, I love Steve Bloom's voice. He makes me want to clear my throat. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know where that is? I know the city. Is it far? It Again, this is where we really start kind of getting the sense of how Joel and Ellie are just chasing their tail. There's, you know, chasing a phantom. Get down. Oh. Uh, for me, is what, what I wanted from this is not to overplay it, Joel? not to like have Ellie cry or Joel? scream or. Shit. Joel. There's probably a lot of panic that happened between this moment and the next. Well, and what a great, what a great line too. You got to tell me what to do. When almost the entire game, she said, "Don't tell me what to do." And here is where we've been lying to everybody when we've been saying you don't play as Ellie. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Asked point blank. Do you play as Ellie? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, in this moment, uh, a lot of this project and the story has been constructed around this moment, which is where the roles flip, where now it's Ellie that has to protect Joel and essentially bring him back to life. Bye-bye, Bunny. It's a pretty cool reveal, too. The pan up. And and there's Ellie as the hunter. <laughs> so what we wanted here is also, oh. is like, you don't know exactly what happened to Joel, what's the state, how much time has passed. Poor buddy. But the way that she's doing that, you can see that she's been doing this for a while. You'll just startle it. Remember how tired your arms got holding that bow stretched? For that bow, <laughs> it was so heavy. And I, re <laughs> I remember that I was shaking and I was like, hey guys, <laughs> <laughs> this is really heavy. <laughs> There's David, Nolan North. Nolan North, hey, so ladies and gentlemen. Like Ruben Langdon is James. Ruben Langdon, what do you want? ladies and gentlemen. This here's my friend James. Remember like, uh, I showed Nolan a part of the game early on and he's like, oh, I wanna, uh, you gotta get me a part somewhere in there. I'm like, okay, I got something for you. <laughs> <laughs> I got a role for you. But I will, I will say this, because I mean, I was on set just for a, a brief part of this, but that's when I, I mean, I've always been a fan of Nolan's work, but that's when I was truly awed by him at how he crafted this character. He took what you had and just really brought it to life. Yeah. I told him the most important part is don't play a bad guy. Yeah. This guy's charismatic. We have to believe that people will follow this guy. And that Ellie could trust him. Yeah. Buddy boy can go get it. He comes back with what I need. The deer is all yours. Anyone else shows up. You put one right between my eyes. That's right. It just shows what versatility Nolan really has. Yeah, that voice, I mean... It's so comforting. It is very comforting, but it's interesting now that I'm hearing it. Knowing what we went through, I get... Take that rifle. I get it's a little unsettling now hearing it. <laughs> Cause I'm like, Ugh. back up. It's a weird gameplay thing, but we went through a version where we're like, okay, she can only carry one long gun at a time, so we have to put the bow on the, on the ground. And they're like, no, it's going to be two guns. Okay, well, let's put the bow back on her backpack. No, no, it's it's she can carry. <laughs> <laughs> and we removed the scope. They used to have a scope on it. And we're like, oh, we don't need to have the scope. I remember being so relieved in this scene when we switched the gun out and I got to put the bow down. I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I love how David complies too. How he just kind of like submits to a little girl. Well, the thing is, is like, he knows the stories. He knows what happened in the university and he's trying to figure this kid out. He's, this whole sequence, he's sizing her up. How, how early or how late on in the script did you write David? I mean, it was written not that long before we shot it. Because remember, you it like started out like from a, a pretty small. King. Yeah, it was referred as the Catamill King. We just knew that Ellie was going to run into the worst of mankind, and she would persevere and come out on the other side. Uh, but then, once like Nolan came in and started like 
putting David together, it was like it became a lot more interesting to make him this really charismatic guy that is just infatuated with Ellie. things get real, you see who kind of glimpses of who he really is. Because there is that moment in that other scene where he makes it seem like, okay, you're in control, you're in control, but she never was. Yeah. We've had some practice. <laughs> well, you handled yourself pretty nice back there. It's cool about, about David and the conversation I heard with Nolan about him is that he's trying to win Ellie over by being honest with her. And here's the part where he's like, I feel like she's ready, I'm gonna kind of reveal myself. And I think, like, I could still get her to come around. Now, you see, I believe that everything happens for a reason. Sure. The other interesting thing, uh, thematically, that's in, uh, everything happens for a reason is the same thing that Marlene really believes. That everything happens, like, it's something she repeats to Joel at the end. But you're kind of seeing how all these characters are just, how much they're willing to go for what they believe in. When you talked about like being surprised by your own writing, was that a moment like that, or was that something that you had intentionally done to where those characters were gonna? No, I just, I think it's just something you think about, and there's a theme that just kind of sticks around in the project, and mm -hmm. then characters end up talking about that stuff because you're thinking about it all the time. Traveling, a little girl. You see, everything happens for. Again, okay, another one of those moments where. You think Ellie's got control. Don't get upset. It's not your fault. Yeah, and then James there. I'm just a kid. I love that. James yeah. the gun. <laughs> no way, David. I'm not gonna let her go. It was such a small role, but I really like what Ruben added there. And that the dynamics between James and David how there's, there's conflict between these two characters, but there's still respect, and he's still listening to David, even though he's questioning his leadership right there. No, that's not your concern. Part of me, the, the, the way I read that was, every time he looked, every time James looked at David, it was like, who the fuck are you right now? What mm -hmm. are you doing? Yeah. Like, he was putting on a show and he saw it. To me, it's interesting how David almost treats Ellie like Quarry. Like, you know, you're a sport. Yeah. Again, Ellie having this kind of bullshit detector, you see her scared here because I th think she realizes there's something really wrong with these guys. I don't know what. I just need to get away. So interesting from watching this though, I would completely believe David. I would totally, I'd follow the guy. It's crazy. It's because you're a cannibal. <laughs> this little moment, this breath, before going to see what's downstairs. And again, for players, it's, it's, it would have been like a while now since they've seen Joel. Joel? Once again, Joel's asleep. <laughs> I only managed to get a little bit of food. I love how these roles have switched too. But where now it's, you know, the protected taking care of the protector. Move your arm. It used to be open. And then we're like, oh, we should probably stitch that <laughs> it up. It was also on the other side. We had to come back and reshoot it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, continuity. <laughs> Actually, this one, we, uh, I remember uh, we shot this one again. Because this is going Naughty Dog method, everybody can like say the two cents. Amy Puckett, one of our coordinators, said, "Where's Ellie's backpack?" And we shot it without thinking about Ellie's backpack. And it was like, "Oh, we should bring <laughs> it back in and use it as a pillow." Right. It's like such a, nice, a cool little touch. You're gonna make it. Yeah, those shivering things was pretty cool. Yeah. The towel thing, right? Was able to Let's see, you did that. Well, yeah. I mean, he still... obviously he animated it. Great moment of them falling asleep next to each other, too. Again, her watching over him. <laughs> to me, you really get a sense of the oppressiveness of the world with all the introduction with 
all of these different kinds of enemies. It's like you, you feel like you're fighting this multi-front battle. It's not just these are the bad guys, and it's so clear. Yeah, and just how much Ellie's now willing to put herself on the line to just get them away from Joel. Wakey, wakey. It's interesting how much audio has made all of this way creepier. We were watching it without audio. It's like the foley of what he's cutting up and back and stuff. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> Time to eat. <laughs> and that's the first time you actually see what it is that you've heard yeah. them refer to it. No, actually, this is the first time you just see it, and it's, it's again. I, I really wanted to downplay the whole cannibalism thing. It's just, just something they have to do. Super. <laughs> he comes to bring her a tray of food. It's, it's, just, it's. This was so cool to watch when you guys were, were doing the scene. It's just like this battle of the wills where he's just trying to like get in her head and she will not let him. She won't give in. Yeah, this was one of my favorite scenes to shoot because some human helping on the side. There was there's just so much there. I mean the cannibalism and then him being all like rapey and molesty. <laughs> Like, I don't know, I'm, I'm a fan of the dark stuff, which you know. So when I read it, I was like, yes! Um, which makes me sound like an awful person, which I am. <laughs> so, I don't know what that says about me that I wrote this. <laughs> I know. Um, I remember I, that night that I went home, I was just in a funky mood. We have to take care of our own, by any means necessary. It was like it was a it was a cooler thing to read about it than after actually having to go in there. It, yeah. it was really hard to do. Yeah. You chop me up into tiny pieces. But see again, I see David being this very gracious person. There's I mean, no... everything he's saying is is kind of true. It's like you kill to survive, we kill to survive. It's just what you do in this world. But again, Ellie just is feeling there's something else here. I still don't look at David as a bad guy at this point. Yeah. Oh, that's what too is like you, we, you were talking to me before we got this whole David thing, and it's like, you want to work with Noel North? I want to do a scene with Noel North. I want to do this. <laughs> and it's like, and I'm like, oh, we cast Noel North. Like, great. I'm like, but you don't act with him at all. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, I feel super lucky I got to work with him because he's 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 the king. He's so fun to work with. I mean, he really owned it. He threw himself into it, like yeah. darkness and all. And again, talking to him about it, he's like, I don't see him as dark. I just. Just, this is just what he wants. That's it. I think David believes his own line of bullshit. Or whether it's bullshit or not, I think David believes that he yeah. actually is doing the right thing. I mean, that's the other thing we discussed with Nolan. is like there's a religious part to David, even though I never wanted that to come out in the script. But he really kind of believes that he's been sent here and he has this destiny mm -hmm. that nothing can really harm him. What am I supposed to tell the others now? And you really took that on on the chin that day too. Man, this whole sequence with David, I was so beat up and bruised. I say, I remember you week. came back the following day with bruises. <laughs> I was like, guys, look at me. <laughs> I had bruises like, everywhere. Oh, that, that looks bad, but we're making we're a game now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that you made it the little girl that broke your fucking finger. Yeah, that was that was a good call. Neil. Well, he calls her stupid little girl, so she throws it back in his face. I also like that she gives him her name under her conditions, which is, I'm going to give it to you, but I'm going to insult you. Right. I also like the fact that Ellie is still so strong that even though she's in that cage, she's still... She's still kind of in control. Yeah. But it's just, it's a much stronger, that, that's a different strength than you'd shown anywhere else in the game before. It's like that winter was a really, really hard winter for you. Here's another funny scene. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, and you're actually, you're, you're wrong. I did get to actually uh, act with Nolan in this. Nolan was a trooper and let me torture him. Although we did record over his lines with Liam O'Brien. That's right, the lovely lob. The lovely Liam O'Brien. This actually 
is my favorite scene in the game. Is it really? And, and it, after I saw you guys shoot it, and then when I saw the animation and everything, I was like, I just love the scene. What is it about it you love so much? I love that Joel is just quietly violent. Mm. And then you pop off the guy's This is his kneecap. job, right? This is what he's good at. Yeah. He's well, like, and it's also for me, when we talked about this, it's like Joel going back to this, like, all right, you want, you want this guy? I'll be yeah. this guy. We've spent almost the entire game for him to, to stay away from being that guy. But in this scene, it's like, I still it's, it's know like how to It's like we're going back to the moment in the beginning we saw him with Robert and Tess. Yeah. This is what he does. This is what he's done in this world. Yeah, it's a no-brainer. He's good at it. Chokes him out and breaks his neck right there. All for the benefit of that guy. And it's like, if there's any like notion that someone has hurt Ellie, then I'm gonna make every single one of you guys pay. Yeah. That's all right. I believe it. No, wait! And actually, this is the scene where I think he got beat up the most. Yeah. Where you did? Yo, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had bruises over my whole entire body. It was ridiculous. Yeah, this wasn't stunts. This was you. <laughs> yeah. I warned you. The thing that I, I love about this scene is how much Ellie's using her brains and her physicality, like everything, to like get out of this situation. Right there. Roll on my sleeve. Look at it. I'll play along. Ruben helped so much during this part because choreographing sort of all of the little movements were so particular. And I think <laughs> everybody sort of knew at this point that I kept hurting people. <laughs> so I was like, you have to give her the foam knife because she will hit me. <laughs> You were beating the shit out of that foam pad. I don't know what you were channeling. <laughs> I have a lot of anger. Stop! Stop! Stop. Fucking touch me! It's, okay. it's me! It's me! We did very few takes of this. Yeah. This was like maybe three takes. Yeah. He tried to. I just felt like so intense with each one. It was like, yeah, that's. We got it. That's that's enough. That's the first time that, you know, Ellie and and Joel like. Embrace was that that physical contact. Yeah. And it's such a great choice, I think, for you to. The dialogue wasn't important. Yeah, it was just a gesture. So it was like, just let the music take over, and it's, it's the same theme from when you know he's, his daughter dies. This was the scene where you got the most emotional. You almost cried in this scene. Oh, that's right. We don't have to do this. You know that, right? First time Joel questions the whole idea of this mission. But in a different way, though. Before yeah. it was, why am I wasting my time doing this? And now I'm saying, maybe that's not what we need. Maybe that's not the maybe answer. Maybe it's not worth it. Well, yeah, it's not worth it. But I love that this comes off of what is your, you said was one of your favorite moments, which was the, the, giraffe, the giraffe sequence. sequence. That fleeting moment where Ellie gets to be a kid one last time yeah. after the whole David sequence. And how you even played that visually with you just kind of catch the very last end of the giraffes moving there. So here we go. Oh, Ellie's dead. <laughs> And it's such, I'm sure it was such an intentional thing to call back to the very beginning to where Joel finds himself in this situation again. And after everything that we've been through, it's like, I won't, I won't go through this. And Hands in the air. Just the, again, that irrational, maddening, yeah. desperate calling for help. I need. From this point forward, it's like the beginning backwards, where if this is the point of Sarah dies, like now you're about to do the carry sequence. Yeah. 
then you like play as Ellie walking, like viewing Joel from yeah. the outside, and then you end on the shot with Ellie. So it's like the beginning reversed. Sorry about that. They don't know who Let you are. Let me see Marlene again. And Ellie. She's all right. They brought her back. Uh, the discussions I had with Merle about this scene is, again, her desperation to find someone that will understand, that will empathize with her decision to kill Ellie to save humanity. And she's hoping she could get that out of Joel because he's the only other person that has cared for Ellie the way she has. And she can't get that out of him. I just think it was such a great way to bookend, to kind of start and begin. With Marlene, and it's so great that they were able to capture just the strength that she has, even when she was sitting in that chair. Yeah. And again, she's completely empathetic, even though she's supposed to be antagonistic. It's a very similar line to what David says. Let me do it. You don't have to worry about her anymore. We'll take care. I worry. Just let me see her, please. You can't. She's being this is one I've always seen Joel in the most parental role. Surgery. The doctors tell me the cordyceps, the growth inside her, has somehow mutated. It's why she's immune. Once they remove it, they'll be able to reverse engineer a vaccine. Yeah, her performance here was just but it grows stellar. So flawless. I remember talking with the, the music guys that uh, were putting a lot of good stuff as music, and, I was, and the first few passes were, there was this dark music that was playing here once Marlene reveals that Ellie's gonna die. And I was like, you can't, we can't play Marlene as bad because she's not bad. She's not. I mean, she's trying to save everybody. And if anything, I told them, was like, you can go dark with Joel. Because again, when Ellie's life is on the line, Ellie's in danger, he lets himself slip back into the murderer, the killer, right. however you want to view it. It's so interesting. I wonder how many players, like, especially in this moment right here, how many sided with Marlene and how many think that Joel was actually the wrong one. It's like, dude, listen to what she's saying. But at the same time, this is the theme of the game for me right here is uh, as a father, you will kill everybody else to save your, 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 your kid. Uh, and that, that has always been kind of the, the through line for me, is Joel's willing to go to the end of the line, meaning sacrifice humanity to save Ellie. Again, Robin, Robin Atkin Downs. Downs. <laughs> Guess what's going to happen to him? <laughs> <laughs> but this was so cool, too, because, I mean, we've seen all the way through both cinematic and gameplay, you know, Joel is able to take on everybody, but just this moment of resolve that I'm gonna wait for my moment. And it almost looks like he's a beaten, defeated person. Give me an excuse. And that grimace right there. It's like, no, he's not. Which way? Yeah, again, the way you've interpreted Joel is like a man who lets his emotions get the better of him here has to keep them in check. You see how like he wants to destroy this man and everybody here for what they're doing to Ellie, but he has to wait. He has to walking. catch the right moment. I say keep walking. I am. Where is the operating room? And again, just such a brutal scene. Where? There's no threat here. It's. Where? It's just time. Oh. Time is the threat. Now I'll let you die. This scene used to originally be all in the operating room. And Joel wasn't carrying Ellie. He like uh, killed Marlene and the doctors in the operating room. And then Peter Field, designer, just kept bugging me. He's like, I feel like we have to play this part. It's, you know, you have to carry Ellie out yourself. You can't just be like hinted at. And we ended up switching the whole structure of this thing. He was right. It was like, it worked way better. That was, that was one, another one of those moments where we're like, we're done, we've got it. No, we don't. <laughs> as, a, as a cinematic, it, it was, it was, I thought it was perfect. But as, part of, as a bigger part of the game, uh, it was weaker than letting you play through some of it. She won't feel anything. Again, the only hesitation Joel has is that this is what Ellie wants. 
And it's such a great decision to show, just cut to this, get, you know, give the audience, the player, just one last moment of, well, what did he choose? Just to, just to sit in that decision. It was also important to show the lie against the reality because the lie has so much weight here at the end. Throughout the game, Joel has never lied to Ellie. He might have disagreed or he might have dismissed her, but he's never outright lied to her. What happened? And for me, it was, this was the moment I decided to lie. We found the fireflies. Turns out there's a whole lot more like you, Ellie. People that to me, it, it hurt to say these things. Because once she started believing, once Ellie started believing that I actually had something, that I was someone, you're basically telling Ellie, you're not special, you're not important, and everything you've done was for nothing. I'm taking this home. Yeah, in the first few versions of the scenes, there's like Ellie had all these questions like, sorry, what happened? Why, who was there? Why would they let you take me out with the gown still on? And and it just was better if she said nothing, and she just turned her back to him. And again, just to show how far Joel's willing to go to remove any threat for Ellie. I mean, we had talked about this before, where, you know, she obviously has that bullshit detector. Mm -hmm. Let me go. And I just felt like I knew you were lying. Please. You know, I feel like, sh I feel like you Ellie knows out. you're lying. Go to the end. So, original ending for this, hey, way back when we put the outline for the story together, is that Ellie believed the lie and they went off to Tommy's, and it was kind of like this wide tracking shot as you see them kind of getting smaller and smaller walking off to Tommy's. But as we went through the story back when I was and the characters got more and more developed, it's like it didn't feel wrong. honest. It didn't feel like Ellie would buy into all of it. And she got bit too. We didn't know what to do. I remember we went over and over and over this scene. And little things changed. Says, but every time I, la I sat and watched you tell this story, I was just you know, we can be all poetic, raptured by it. It was so easy to listen to you tell this story. I'm still waiting for my turn. Ellie. Her name was Riley, and she was the first to die. And then it was Tess. And then Sam. None of that is on you. You don't understand. I struggled for a long time with surviving. And you, no matter what, you keep finding something to fight for. Now, I know that's not what you want to hear right now. Swear to Interesting me. hearing arguments around the office uh, about how people interpreted that last Swear line, me, that last that okay from Ellie. Whether it's too. okay, I believe you, or okay, I could put this behind us, or okay, I don't trust you anymore and it's over. Okay. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. We certainly, this is the, for some of, for some of the scenes, it's the first time we had a chance to take a look at it and it was, it was interesting to kind of, in retrospect, after everything that we've been through, be able to kind of recall what we were thinking on that day and then you know two and a half years later <laughs> how we yeah, feel about these it. things it's, it's interesting we're ending this on the credits because there's so many people that have all these people have put the story together right i mean whether it's artists or programmers or without all these people none of this comes through it doesn't matter how good the story is or the performances or there's hundreds of hands that this goes through yeah. and gets different kind of interpretations throughout the way until you end up with the final thing that uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed.